Hey fun fans, my name is Nick Mathis from FRC Team 33 The Killer Bees and I'm back again to dive into some team updates and Q&A questions here for this year's game, Crescendo. Today we'll be taking a look at team updates 0, 0, 0, 001 and 02, as well as three Q&A questions that I believe are important for you to know. All of this and more coming up on this episode of FRC Updates Now. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotics scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. All right, well, first we'll be starting with Team Update 00. Um, I thought this was a unique thing that first put together um, in general. Actually, on the day of kickoffs, this has been out for um, about a week now. But essentially, um, you know, they made a uni unified document that would be able to be used to try and differ um, various issues or rules that may have changed um, between last year's manual to this year's manual for Crescendo. So this was a pretty cool thing they put together. There's definitely some things that I want to highlight in here, um, specifically um, in the robot rules that are big, as well as some organizational changes here we start with. Um, you know, important to note that some rules are combined now in the manual, so they're trying to condense the manual in general. So I know Colin had talked a little bit about the manual being reworked over the summer, so appreciate the people at uh, first for working on that and taking care of this. But um, jumping down to content changes, main content changes, sex and seven of the game rules. Um, G103 is moved to G412, keeping your bumpers low. And that reference to repeated and greater momentary violations of the bumper zone. Um, if it's repeated, um, that you can be disabled for that. Um, five count on pins. That's how it's been for the past couple years, but it's moved to G420. Uh, stay out of other robots, G204 to G417, and so forth. There's a couple other here that um, are listed. Uh, the big one that I really think that I want to highlight out of here, um, jumping all the way down to the robot construction rules, um, is a notion about the... Uh, bumpers. Um, usually, you know, that's the bumpers you've been allowed to have various gaps or certain scenarios in which that um, you could have corner bumpers as long as they were a certain amount um, specified. Uh, the spe specified dimension on each corner. Um, and this year, they're actually pretty much requiring you um, to essentially have bumpers all the way around. Um, if you look at R401 actually in the game manual, uh, it's highlighted that you can actually only have about a half inch gap um, on your bumper. So um, pretty much we're going to see, you know, at least for this year, first moving away from those corner bumper styles where you can have, you know, sometimes six, seven inches of exposed frame rail, um, which is, I think, overall is a good thing. Um, I think it allows, you know, I, I've been a big fan of one piece bumpers for a while now, and I think it just overall allows for better construction of the bumpers and uh, makes them more sturdy. So I think this is a good change for first two um, require bumpers all the way around the frame perimeter you can see here. Um, jumping down, RO406, uh, team numbers on bumpers, making sure that you're highlighting that. Uh, remember that did change. You were allowed to um, have color in the numbers versus really um, really um, knocking down and making sure that, um, you know, hammering down the point that they need to be white and really ensure their proper, um, you know, font is used for that and whatnot. So um, they really want to make sure that they're uniform across the teams and, you know, that they follow those specific requirements that they're listed in the game manual. Um, bumper inches, bumper construction, R408 lists that the measured pool noodle diameter is down to two and an eighth now to allow for a little bit more wiggle room to try and find pool noodles. Um, I know that there was some discussion over, um, over the summer regarding this and, you know, trying to find two and a half inch pool noodles or two and a quarter inch pool noodles actually measuring lower than what they were being sold as. So opening up a little bit there, um, R501 allowable motors, I know this has been, you know, hammered as well with along with R502, but, um, you know, allowing for the Kraken X60 as well as the Neo Vortex and those new motors that got released uh, being FRC legal. And then if you didn't see the blog post in August 2022, really ensuring only four propulsion motors are being used on the robots. Um, and those are the main things really out of Team Update 00 that um, were big for me that I wanted to highlight on. Um, jumping down to the terminants, or tournaments, I thought one of the things that they added, uh, Mash Replays adds item G, which I thought was uh, an interesting and welcome point. A robot radio disconnects that impairs operation of other robots on the field for more than eight seconds will recur 
um, a match replay. So that this was a pretty welcome notion added, um, you know, for the overall team experience and, you know, that being said throughout the tournament. So um, jumping to team update 01, which is going to start on page four here. Um, so the, the big point, um, there's two really big things that get released in this team update here. Um, the first one is being the note availability. So obviously the game piece in Crescendo that we use is called the note. Um, there's some issues with availability uh, first and Andy marker experiencing. So if you had placed an order at the beginning of the year, um, I think this came out, you know, I think the Monday or Tuesday after kickoff. Um, so if you had placed an order for notes, um, Andy Mark is dialing back on, um, depending on the quantity you ordered to ensure that, you know, teams across the globe can have the unnecessary amount of notes to com complete, complete the robot design and review that. Um, so essentially for teams more than 24 notes on their order, Andy Mark is going to back order the extra notes and work closely with the customers to determine future note shipments. I believe they're working with the manufacturer to get another run of those notes. Um, so hats off to the folks at Andy Mark and First for trying to ensure that each team uh, has a fair shot. Um, I know it's unfortunate for the teams that might have placed, you know, 50 and 60 note orders um, on kickoff and are having to dial back on that. But I think it's important that overall the folks um, of each team are getting an equal and fair shot at that um, to ensure that they're getting their notes available. Um, first championship radios. This was a big one that, um, you know, kind of shocked the world. Um, this was released uh, in a recent blog post, but if you didn't see, uh, vivid hosting, um, has been working on a new robot radio, which is very welcome, um, to supersede the open mesh, um, radio that we've been using for the past couple of years. Uh, they did a lot of testing. I believe it was used at cheesy champs or Chessy champs, as well as uh, a couple other off season events. Um, and it sounds like FIRST is planning on using this radio at the FIRST Championship um, this coming year. It's no secret that there's been a lot of robot communication issues over the past couple years of the championship due to the nature of the tournament. Um, as many robots are being, you know, communicating with the field system at that event in the same vicinity. Um, so this is a pretty welcome change. I'm glad to see FIRST moving step forwards um, to get that new robot radio available to teams. Um, I'm a little disappointed that this isn't going to be available for... Um, teams to use prior to that. So, uh, for example, like if you weren't able to attend one of those offseason events, the first time you're actually going to use this radio is the championship, which is um, a little terrifying. But I'm sure that the folks at uh, Vivid Hosting, you know, in correlation with First, are really trying to do uh, a g good job on you know updating teams and making sure that those radios are pretty bulletproof um, before going to the championship. Uh, you know, using them in the highest competition um, that this program can get to. So. Um, jumping down to some game manual updates, um, I know there was some discussion on Chief Delphi regarding um, there not being a sound horn for Endgame, um, or essentially, you know, when that usually happens. Um, it was added that in the final 20 seconds there will be a guitar riff, which I think is a pretty cool addition for an audio cue um, to be used to really signify the end game. Um, I believe that the only part in this game that really signifies end game is when the human player can actually throw the high note onto the microphone. So it's good to at least have that audible, that warning for the last 20 seconds for drivers to be aware of you know how much time is left. So that's a pretty welcome addition on first part. Um, a big point here in the amplification section, I know there's been a lot of discussion on this, but if you haven't seen this yet, really uh, really take a look at this. But um, So amplification is essentially the power-up, as I like to call it. It's entertaining. Um, I've been always used to... Um, I was a big... My senior year was 2018, so when I first saw this in the game manual, I was like, oh, we got another power-up. But uh, amplification of the speaker, um, you know, it's essentially... Uh, this content was meant to be in the original manual release, but it wasn't, so it's important to note um, that once the criterion is met, the human player may press the amp button, which amplifies their speaker for 10 seconds. So that's giving you that point boost. Or until four notes are scored, whichever comes first. So this is essentially saying that you can only score four notes in the amplification, uh, in the notion that the amplification is created. So... You either have 10 seconds in which you can um, score those notes for that point bonus or until four notes are scored. So if you only scored three notes, you'll get the full 10 seconds. But at the minute you score four notes, um, the amplification is over. So I thought this was an interesting thing. I know there's a lot of strategy talks about, you know, possibly getting a pile of notes together and then parking in front of the podium. And then, you know, once the amplification was hit, trying to essentially spam the speaker as quick as possible and getting those 
points in as quick as possible to really um, you know take advantage of that amplification period. Um, but it looks like you'll only be able to score full no or four notes per amplification period. Um, moving into section 7.4.1 about auto, um, only close shots in auto. Uh, they added some, just some clarification here that in an auto, a robot whose bumpers are completely outside their wing may not cause a note to travel into or through their wing such that the note enters the wing while not in contact with that robot. Violation will be a tech foul and then the diagram here to also clarify that. Um, robots, no high notes. Um, they did finally confirm that, um, you know, robots may not cause high notes to leave the fields, including through an amper speaker score on a microphone. So robots cannot score on a microphone. Um, it is truly meant for the human player past that standpoint. Um, and then the rest of this is, um, you know, we have some dimension, um, fixes, um, I really was happy to see this added, section 7.4.5. A coach activating their E-stop or A-stop is an exception to this rule. I've always been a big fan of this. I'm glad that the coach can do that um, because obviously there's a lot of stress on the drivers as a whole as we have it, so I'm glad to see this added as well. Um, and then uh, basically down here, just some clerical error or clerical fixes. Indiana State champs capacities up to 38 teams, so happy for those folks in Indiana. Um, and then jumping to uh, Team Update 2, which most recently just came out. Um, nothing too crazy here. Um, a lot, Some dimension fixes, um, as well as a couple of grammar fixes here. Um, the contact points for the onstage scoring eligibility was also added. I think this is a good diagram to add. Um, and then also some clarification through the amplification. So important, I wanted to, I want to highlight this. They added some... Um, they added some language here. While notes are delivered through the amp after the two-note threshold is reached or during amplification, do not contribute to the next amplification or cooperation requirement. They do earn match points, but in other words, an alliance can only bank up to two notes at a time towards amplification or cooperation, which I think is a welcome ad. I'm glad they were able to highlight this. Um, G408, they added the language of if a robot scores a high note on a microphone, its alliance is ineligible for the ensemble RP. So even if you do it on accident, if you have a strategy that... You know, you're trying to throw notes across the field and get them into a certain spot of the field and then score them later. Make sure that um, you're not scoring them on a high note <laughs> on accident because um, if you do that, you're going to be ineligible for the ensemble RP. All right, taking a look at a few Q&A questions here that I think are important for your team to take a look at um, as you're discussing your robot design and strategy throughout the next couple of weeks. Um, question 27 asked here by FRC 5507, scoring an amp during amplified count towards cooperation. If you score a note in the amp while the speaker is amplified, can that note be used for cooperation? The answer by the GDC was no in order for cooperation button to be used, there must be at least one note accumulated. When a human player uses an amplification, both accumulated notes are used, and a new note cannot be accumulated until the current amplification ends. So important to note with that change in amplification, making sure that you're clarifying exactly um, when the notes are scored and when you do actually obtain that amplification um, bonus. Looking at question 33, high note versus regular note controlling one game paste, asked by FRC 4272. G409 speaks on robot controlling only one note in Telia, but says nothing about high notes. G408 speaks specifically about robots scoring high notes, but nothing about controlling them. Should a high note go under the control of a robot, either by being lodged or in some way other defined as controlled? Per the manual, can a robot still control a regular note without foul? The GDC answered high notes, Controlled by a robot do not count towards the one note limit listed in G409, but important to note as we just went over in the previous team update, robots cannot score high notes onto microphones, and if you do accidentally, you will not be eligible for the ensemble RP. So if you have some sort of strategy where you're trying to, you know, herd those game pieces as stated in a certain spot of the field, make sure that you don't actually shoot one of those high notes onto um, the microphone as you're going to actually make your alliance ineligible for that ensemble RP. And finally, taking a look at our last Q&A question, question 36 asked by FRC 695, when does amplification end once four nodes enter the speaker? If four nodes enter the speaker while amplified before the 10 second limit runs out, when does it again become possible to accumulate more nodes in the amp toward the next amplification? From a visible perspective, once four nodes enter the speaker, when does the blue amp stack light go from two hertz blinking to off again? Additionally, once four notes have been processed while amplified, do additional notes processed within the next three seconds earn amplified or not amplified points? 
The GDT answered, once four notes have been processed by the speaker during an amplification, the amplification immediately ends. I want to highlight here that it says, once four notes have been processed by the speaker. So, make sure to take a look at the game manual to see what the GDC has listed for proper processing time per note. Notes processed after that are counted as not amplified until the next amplification is activated. As soon as an amplification ends, the amp light light stops blinking and notes scored in the amp can be accumulated for future amplifications or cooperation. So, it's important to note that although it might visually look like the amplification period has ended once four notes scored, it's when it, they have been processed by the speaker for that standpoint. So as you're looking through and making sure, you know, trying to determine strategy on when to use the amplification period, make sure that you don't leave out that processing time per note the speaker has to go through. Throughout the next couple weeks, we'll be taking a look at a couple other videos of other team updates and important Q&A questions that I think it's important for your team to know as you're looking through the build season and uh, moving through your strategy and robot design here. I would like to thank Tasif from uh, Fun as well for helping me grab a couple of these Q&A questions, but I'm excited to help your teams throughout the next couple weeks here um, throughout your robot design and strategy. But um, this has been FRC Updates Now with Nick Mathis, and thanks again. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotics scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.